Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Engelbard. Today I've got a season-appropriate edition of Utterly Pointless Comparisons for you. I'll be taking a look at the arcade and PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16 versions of Splatterhouse. As usual, here's a look at the arcade and system specs while I tell you just a smidge about the game. Now Namco, known for being the purveyors of cute little arcade games, with saccharine little characters and adorable little sound effects, released the horrendous nightmarish gore fest known as Splatterhouse into the arcades in 1988. The game was running on their System 1 arcade hardware, which powered things like Dragon Spirit and Pac-Mania. Now, Splatterhouse, at its core, is a 2D side-scrolling single-plane beat-em-up, akin to things like Kung Fu Master and Vigilante, but wrapped in a slasher and horror movie skin. As a game, it's alright. It was really more famous for its unique subject matter since there was not really much like it that was out at that time. Namco released a port of Splatterhouse themselves for the PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16. The game was released in both Japan and the US in 1990, but a few months apart. Now their home port of Splatterhouse for that system is pretty well done overall. It really captured the gameplay and the feel of the arcade game, even though the graphics and especially the sound are really scaled down from that arcade original. But hey, that makes it interesting to take a look at here. Speaking of taking a look at things, I'll be taking a look at the US versions of both games. Yes, I know, the PC Engine version of Splatterhouse is slightly less censored than the US TurboGrafx-16 version, so why am I doing this? Because I want to make you as angry at me as humanly possible. Now, the reason I'm looking at the US versions, th these were the ones I played growing up, and these are also the ones that I feel people are most familiar with, so it's really a better basis for comparison. Also, with the extra changes in the US version, it makes it a little more interesting to take a look at it. I will call out differences between the PC Engine and TurboGrafx versions where appropriate during the commentary. As far as recording methodology goes, not a whole lot to report on this one. I did use save states to help keep the gameplay in sync between the two versions of the game, but other than that, nothing really to report. I just played both games through from start to finish. Alright, let's go to it. Ow! I deserve that. The arcade version opens with this little sequence of the mask attaching itself to protagonist Rick while the home version just shows the mansion in a rainstorm. As the game begins, we can see the turbo version is pretty scaled down. It has much simpler backgrounds, is missing the foreground elements entirely, and has much less variety in its tiles. Also, Rick's mask is red in the US release to help avoid any problems with similarities to a character whose name starts with a J and ends with an ASIN. Did you notice the weapon at the start is a cleaver in the arcade game and a 2x4 on the TG-16? If not, notice it now! And when you do get the 2x4 in the arcade version, it's way more violent. You slam enemies into the wall and they explode. It's significantly gorier. Something else that will become apparent pretty quickly is that the sound is dramatically different between these two versions of the game. The arcade uses loads and loads of digital effects and voices, nearly all of which were cut from the Turbo version and replaced with standard sound effects. Here's our first boss encounter. The background is very simplified again here on the Turbo version. Oh, and hey, did you notice how much smaller the game window is vertically on the TG version? Well, notice it now! Another thing I'll point out just in general is that both the music and sound effects are much more unsettling in the arcade version. They're a bit brighter and less grungy on the Turbo Graphics. The stage prologue graphics are a lot simpler on the Turbo Graphics again. They just show Rick and usually some enemies standing there. In the arcade version, we get a much more elaborate scene with a door that explodes, revealing a scene from the level. As we begin Stage 2, we can see the omissions are much the same as with Stage 1. 
We've got a simpler pattern on the floor in the TG16, fewer colors, less tile variety, and we lose all of the foreground elements. In this case, bodies and body parts. The arcade version is also a little harder here with tougher enemies, like those guys who, uh, when you kill them, their head pops off and comes after you. Those guys. This simple area is a bit closer on both versions compared to what we've seen so far, but the water is dithered all to hell on the TG-16. In the arcade version, the water looks a little nicer, but the low color contrast really gives this area a bit of a dull look in the arcade original. Also, the arcade version has water dripping off the walls that's missing from the home version. Alright, boss area. Yeah, it gets the simplification treatment again on the turbo. Just look at the floor, it's entirely missing the wood panels. There's also more color and animation in the arcade during this scene. Just look how those drawers in the cabinet or TV stand or whatever that thing is bounce around in the arcade game. Once again, we can see the opening prologue screen thing here is pretty different between the two versions. Now, stage 3 has totally different music in the two games. The arcade has this horror movie sounding thing going on, while the turbo version just repeats the stage 1 music here. The TG-16 version has fewer enemies than the arcade version as well. Now if you're wondering why I'm kicking these enemies like a savage while I have this handy dandy gun, I'm saving this gun for the boss, or at least a few shots of it. I'll note here in this stage, things are more unsettling and detailed again in the arcade game. It's got these thunder rumbles that really add a lot of atmosphere to this level, and it's got a lot of little details in the foreground and background, like skeletons and things like that that are just omitted from the TG version. It's kind of curious to me that Namco didn't use parallax in the arcade version in this area, I mean, the board supported multiple layers of scrolling, and this is practically begging for it. And here's our dual chainsaw boss on both versions. Now you can do the item pick up and drop trick to reach him with the two guns in both versions. Handy, because getting in close on this guy sucks. What's the item pick up and drop trick? Well, when you pick one item up while you're already holding one, you drop your current item, but it drops a little bit in front of you. So you can use this trick to transport items from one area in a level to further down. For the little Stage 4 prologue intermission, the music sounds way better on the Turbo Graphics version. Yeah, as the level starts, it's the same story as always. On TG-16, we have fewer colors, less detailed tiles, we're missing some elements like the skeletons and corpses that dot the arcade game, yada yada yada. Hey look, there's what I was just talking about. That dead body is missing on the home version. Oh. 
All right, the Hall of Mirrors, because, yeah, this is a room you'd expect to see in a mansion. By the way, how many miles long is this mansion exactly? I feel like even if we were driving through it, we still wouldn't be at the end of it yet. I'm starting to wonder if this mansion has its own zip code. Anyway, so your clones dissolve into a hideous mess of powder in the arcade game when you kill them, but not on the good old Turbo, they just blink away. I would also say this is another area where the music is just way more unsettling in the arcade game. Alright, boss area! And you know what? It looks a lot less detailed on Turbo, yeah, sure, but it actually has better music! And look at this, the weapon is different in both versions. In the arcade, you get an axe. On the Turbo, you get a golden cleaver. Also, here's some actual censorship. The upside-down cross of the arcade game is replaced by a decapitated head on the Turbo graphics. Because, yeah, a severed floating demon head is much less disturbing than an upside-down letter T. And there's kind of no point in this particular scene at the end of the boss fight on the Turbo Graphics, because it's missing the altar and the images in the background, and it's missing Jennifer's scream, which pierces the temporary peaceful moment from the arcade original. The Stage 5 intro prologue thing is simpler on TG16, blah blah blah. Simpler backgrounds on TG16, blah blah blah. Oh wait a minute, what's this? No cobwebs on the Turbo Graphics version in the bookcases? What a travesty! The second room here may be the point where these two games match up the most closely visually, even though the Turbo version is lacking some detail here. Alright, ghost girls drop skulls and paintings try to eat your face for a moment in this room. Yep, pretty similar on both. And here's our reflection friend again. Look how badly the wallpaper has been simplified. Another travesty. But wait, the travesties aren't done yet. They continue in this leech room, as it's missing all of the foreground elements in the home version here. Oh, 
Alright, the music sounds a lot better on the turbo version in this part again. Here, listen to the arcade one first for a sec, and then we'll go to the turbo one. By the way, this is the most annoying boss in the entire game. In the arcade game, it laughs this awful laugh at you whenever it transforms. What's interesting is what happens to Jennifer after you defeat the boss. In the arcade game, she just vaporizes and she's gone in a puff of smoke. In the turbo version, she just slowly dissolves into thin air. And then after you beat the boss, in the arcade version, the wall is just covered in this gruesome, gory substance, and then you have it all leaking down into this hole that you jump into. In the turbo graphics version, it's super clean and very simple. Two more stages to go. So the arcade has these weird cobweb-like things in the foreground that are missing from the turbo version. Again, I'm surprised Namco didn't use any parallax here in the arcade. They sure could have had a good four-layer setup on this stage. Also, this stage really reminds me of the last level of R-Type. Is there any game in which embryos aren't awful? I'll also say that once again, the music in the TurboGrafx-16 version sounds better in this level than the arcade version, at least to me. Your opinion may vary. Alright, back to smashing some more evil bubbles and babies for a bit before we battle the boss. And the boss is this weird heart thing. It takes a lot of punishment before it finally goes down in both versions. Now once it does, in the arcade version, watch out! The exploding mess that comes out of it will damage you. On the turbo version, the standard small, fiery explosion is harmless. Alright, our final prologue. Now I've got to say, while the TG-16 version of Splatterhouse is good, the arcade version is so technically visually simple, it's a bit disappointing that the home version isn't closer, even on a relatively small hue card. Anyway, this level is also way quieter on the TG-16 version. In the arcade game, it just constantly bombards you with these loud digital effects. Here's our final boss, and more censorship. They replace the cross again, this time with a gravestone. And man, this is a weird song for the final boss. I don't think it really fits in with the game or the theme, but there you are. Now this boss is actually kind of easy in the turbo version, but he's much more unpredictable in the arcade game, with attacks that are more difficult to avoid. Uh, 
yeah, we just basically got to jump over his hands a little bit and then avoid those little shards of whatever that he rains down from the sky. Keep at it, and eventually you'll take him out. Finally, our long, horrible journey is over. Look at that doofy looking version of Rick in this end screen of the arcade game. And once again, Namco left out the trees in the turbo port. What does Namco have against trees on the turbo graphics? Jeez! I'll note that once again here, I feel like the Turbo Graphics version definitely gets the nod for having the better version of the music. I think what's probably most surprising about the arcade version of Splatterhouse is that it doesn't leverage the hardware more, and that we don't see things like parallax scrolling in it. I mean, this board was capable of doing four independent moving layers and two static ones. You could have had a lot of depth in its visuals. Anyway, so what'd you all think of this game? Had you ever seen it before? Have you played it yourself? Go ahead and tell me all about your Splatterhouse experiences in the comments. Alright, we get a little extra scene in the arcade game coming up here. And thus, Rick's terrible, horrifying nightmare is complete. He'll never have to deal with any of these nightmarish, gory, gooey demons again. You know, until Splatterhouse 2. Alright, that's Splatterhouse for ya. Now when it comes to the arcade versus the TurboGrafx-16 version, which one would I rather play? It's a pretty close call, but I'd say despite the cutbacks, I'd rather play the TurboGrafx-16 version. The difficulty has been just, you know, adjusted down a little bit, and it makes it a lot more fair and less frustrating than the arcade original. And when it comes to music, it's kind of a wash because some of the music's better in the arcade game and some of it's better in the home version. Overall, they're both pretty good, but if you're new to the game and have never played it before, I'd probably recommend the Turbo Graphics version because of the gameplay changes. Alright, so, like I said before, Splatterhouse is not a great game. It's a good game, you can have some fun with it, but its main claim to fame is its gory subject matter that made it fairly unique among other games at the time it came out. This first game was ported to several systems, primarily in Japan, but Splatterhouse had two contemporary sequels in Splatterhouse 2 and Splatterhouse 3 that were only ever released for the Sega Genesis. 
maybe I'll take a look at those games sometime in the future. Alright, that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. If you enjoyed it, please toss it a like and share it online somewhere. If you haven't yet, hey, go ahead and subscribe already, what are you waiting for? And you know what, while you're doing that, hit that notification bell so you know as soon as I release my next video. Alright, with that I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.